demo, or not demo, but just walkthrough of the second device I built. Um, I'm showing you the diagram as it appears in Fusion 360, and I'm hoping that this will take no more than about you know, three minutes, just like the other video. So this is, it functions the same exact way as the first device I showed you, except it's a lot simpler. It only uses two masses, but the principle is still the same. Uh, and actually I think the calculations are more physics friendly. You use something called the Lagrange. Um, so it's made of three parts. Basically we have what's called the driver module, the differential system, which is this thing here, and AutoCAD's trying to verify something, but whatever. Then there is the motor module, or I call it the power motor control unit, which is just this thing here. So I'm going to go through and break down how these work um, with some animations for everything else. Stay tuned. OK, so very quickly, let's just start with the uh, power motor control unit. Obviously, this is a motor. The motor is the thing that will spin all of the gears and make it work just like a clock. You can think of this as a kind of clock because it really its function is no different from that. So that's first power motor control unit. That's the first module, as I call it. We have like four or three, I can't remember. Next, we have what's called the driver module. It's called the driver module because this is the thing which is directly connected to the motor through this aperture or opening right here. And the motor, when it spins, it spins this giant gear. And this giant gear will basically transfer its rotation to another gear, which transfers to the differential. And then that transfers to the main driver module. So I'll get into more detail as we move up. So this is the second module. The next module. Okay, so we finally made it to the next module. This is the differential gear. So the role of this mechanism is basically to take the rotation which is coming in and transfer it, basically reciprocate it, flip it. So that way when it comes out, by the time it reaches the main driver, it will be going in the same direction. So it's a basic differential mechanism and I can show you how it works. Um, just by animating it. So you can take a look. It's actually kind of mesmerizing if you take a look at how it looks. So all of these joints, they get animated in this way. Um, I'm not really gonna spend time going to the specifics of this because these are just kind of like the nuts and bolts that make the thing work, so yeah. Okay, congratulations, so we've made it. Um, I'm going to describe the most important part, which is how everything works. So the mechanism behind this particular configuration. So anyway, this entire thing here is called the particle module. And uh, within the particle module, I just removed the casing. You just have the two disks. The two disks are basically what are gonna generate our thrust. Now what's important, why this all works is because of the unique gearing ratio. I didn't spend time talking about how the gearing ratios work. But basically the gearing ratios, if you have the right gearing ratio, you trace out a kind of, I can't, a Lissajou curve. You trace out particular kind of mathematical curves. And these curves have some benefits if you're trying to transfer force as energy, right? In terms of rotation. So in this particular case, we basically end up tracing uh, something which is more or less of a trammel. You've probably heard of the trammel of Archimedes. This is essentially a trammel. That's what happens. In fact, let me show you the trammeling motion. So first, I call this part the stator because it holds the particles together. In fact, just to show you what this looks like, if I can, um, here is one side of it. So the particle disk is in front there. It's another particle disk right over there. It's a, a, a total view overhead. Let's show you the trammeling. So when the stators are moving, that means if I was just moving this thing moving the stator, this is what you'd see in terms of the animation. As you can see, the particles are being forced to move, right? Something you should pay attention to uh, as I stop this here is that the center of mass between the particles when we're not moving is just right smack dab in between them. You can see that, right? When this thing starts moving, the center of mass basically traces out a circle, I believe. Um, so, cause it'll be going here and here. It might actually not be a circle. I think it's just a bouncing, excuse me. It's not a circle. It just goes up and down. It oscillates just like a spring, a normal pendulum. And that's because this is a pendulum. It's a simple harmonic oscillator. So let me just show you the trammel because trammels are basically just pendulums. You see that? Just as I said. So yeah, center of mass, it's not going in a circle. It's coming up and down, bouncing up and down like a spring between the two, right? The high points. So, um, or actually it may be a circle. So either way, it's still a spring. So let's move on from this here. I'm sorry, I haven't done this in like forever. So now what I'm doing is I'm rotating the outer gear, right? If I rotate the outer gear, then that causes these particles to move individually. Something to note that I didn't mention earlier is that when these particles are rotating, they generate a force, right? A centrifugal force, um, which doesn't exist. It's really just a reactive 
force to the centripetal force. But anyway, when they're rotating, they generate a force. How do we get that force to you know stay maintained? You have to have two types of rotations. So this rotation doesn't really help us. When we combine this rotation that you see here with this first rotation that I showed you, when we put the two together, this is the effect we get. We get this effect. And what you can't really see, but what's happening here is that this outer gear is rotating at you know a rate which is you know just one complete rotation, while these two gears are rotating twice the speed of the outer gear. And if you look at the center of mass between the two points as this is going, it's right smack dab in the center. Technically, there's a force that's being imparted to it, and it's always going forward. And so you get a net thrust, which is going up. So it's transferring force. Um, that is basically how this works. I mean, there's really not much to it other than that. Getting the mechanism to make this sort of thing work so that you preserve the acceleration without accidentally introducing other forces can be a real pain unless you take time to think about it. I mean, you saw the differential. The differential is kind of complicated. So that's essentially how this all comes together. Hopefully it makes sense. If you want to know more, I can tell you more. And yeah.